Isn't that thoughtful? The maid turned down your bed, and instead of leaving you a chocolate, left you a condom. It feels somewhat like a condom. Of course, your memories of what a condom feels like are a little hazy. I hope you don't die of old age like my last one. This is an authentic Spartacus brand condom, ribbed, lubed, and speckled with over 1,000 pleasure bumps. You grab the condom from your pillow. Spartan brand. Size, extra small. You consider ripping open the package just to confirm its contents, but decide against it. Here? Now? Why? Now is not the time nor the place, but play your cards right and your time may come. Even if you don't. Mark, the spa plumber, lies under your sink working hard to correct your brown water. Wouldn't you think he'd be uncomfortable lying on that huge tool belt? Ooh, hey, that tickles. Hey, what are you, some kind of fag? Get your hands off of me. Thanks for coming so fast. I wish I had a dollar for every time I heard that. No, I, I mean, thanks for fixing my sink so quickly. <laughs> Is it done yet? Done? Already? Give me a break. You know how many things I gotta get done today? I got people waiting everywhere. You think you're the only person in this place with plumbing problems? You guests are all alike. I'm so busy, I don't have time to take a crap anymore. Yeah, I can tell by the way you wear your jeans. Gosh, I'm so sorry you're so busy. How about if I get out of your way? <laughs> See you later. I'll just wait in my room or something. Oh, yeah, good idea. The sooner you leave me alone, the sooner I'll get this done. Jeez, what an asshole. Jeez, what an asshole. Say... I, uh, thought you said you were leaving. Oh, I did, didn't I? Oh, let me guess. Just in from San Francisco. You can't get to the toilet with this plumber in the way. The plumber doesn't care to watch you right now. You can't wash your hands when the plumber's working under the sink. Say, I bet he'd never miss a simple adjustable wrench. This wrench is adjustable to fit nuts up to 1.5 inches across. You have nothing to worry about. You twirl the wrench's adjuster a little just to make sure it still works. What's the matter? Got a nut loose? Hey, what a coincidence! I have a wrench that looks exactly like that! <laughs> hey, if you use that in the pool, you could order a drink. Uh, exactly what are you proposing? I, uh, don't need a key. Got my master key. 
Then why would I want your key? I'm already in here. Besides, I have a master key. And you don't. And, uh, you never will. <laughs> hey, pal. I got a match for you. My underwear and your breath. Ah, uh, no thanks. I just had one of those a few minutes ago. Oh, yeah. I think Billy D has a uh, swimsuit just about that size. You can use that when I leave. Excuse me. Hey! I'm having enough trouble here without you poking me with stuff. I got your water problem taken care of, Mr. Leper. You won't have any more troubles now. Thank you. If I do, I'll ask for you. How did I know that? Concierge desk, Carlos speaking. Senor, want to lose 10 ugly pounds? Cut off your head. Women think you're dark and handsome. When it's dark, you're handsome. Oh, please don't turn the other cheek, amigo. It's just as ugly. You could be a model for horror masks. I don't know how old you are, senor, but you sure look it. Have a nice day. Think of all the trouble that woman went to just for the chance to look into your room and maybe catch you undressed. You hear the obnoxiously loud whine of a compressor emanating from somewhere below you near the kitchen. Hotel's first floor leads off to the west, while the hotel lobby is to the east. You especially enjoy the fuzzy flocked wallpaper. It's not as cool as that lush red and gold flock in your bedroom back at Mom's, but it's close. This sculpture is so obscene, La Costellata installed a window frame just to hide it from you. I'm sure I saw some guy carve this same sculpture on PBS last week. Of course, it could have been a rerun. This door bears a tiny brass plaque with the delicate La Costellata logo and the words, Health Spa Lobby. This is the lobby of La Costellata's exclusive health spa. A person waits behind the counter. There are several doors. I do love a room totally covered in indoor-outdoor carpeting. It's so sharp and jazzy. Leave it here for now. Besides, Gary is watching. Hi, big boy. New around here? Uh, no. Uh, I mean, yes. <laughs> and leaving soon, I hope. Such a tease! Hey, what do I have to do to get some service around here? You have to stop talking to the walls for one thing, honey. You get an uneasy feeling that this would be a poor choice of locations in which to go waving that thing about. 
Don't look too closely. This particular carpet causes retinal damage if you stare at it too long. Great, now you've got athlete's palm. You can't pick it up, you're standing on it. Duh! Nice weave. The carpet is floored by your compliments. You consider making a contribution to the unsavory mix of bodily fluids that have already dampened this carpet, but your sense of cleanliness wins out. The right wall sconce hangs just a little lower than the left wall sconce. Some say the room is designed that way, but you think of it as an imperfection. Guests of the spa don't have control over the ambient lighting. Everything's kept as bright as possible to best display the garish decorating. If you've planted a secret microphone in this lamp, I'm on to you. Big spiky plastic plants grow lushly amid the silk mulch and styrofoam soil. These plants feel so real, if you were a blind man wearing gloves, you'd never know they were fake. There's no need to carry a plant around with you. If you really want another plastic plant, when you finally escape this horrible place and get back home, just start a clipping from one of your other plastic plants. Hey plant, I think I love you. The plant responds, can't we just be fronds and leaves? You surreptitiously expose yourself to the plants. There's a tasteful marble fountain in the middle of the lobby. It provides the familiar soothing sound of recirculating dirty water. You consider taking a drink from the fountain, but that water looks more than just a little polluted. The fountain is much too heavy to be taken and you certainly don't need any of that slimy water. You're not a talking fountain, are you? You never could resist the sound of running water. If you need any help with that, please let me know. Guess I didn't have to go. If you need any help with that, please let me know. The sign reads, Health Spa. You can't reach the sign. Too bad you didn't wear your platform shoes. It's way over your head. A feeling not wholly unfamiliar to you. What would you say? Surely not, hey baby, what's your sign? Well, yeah, we could do that. Yes, we could do that, but it would be wrong. Why, you'd need a 10-foot pole to hit that sign. Trust me, you don't have one. At this counter, Gary the towel attendant helps guests check towels in and out. You pound the desk a few times. Service! Service! I'm a human being, for heaven's sake. You don't have to act like I'm not here. The counter is so attached to the floor. And you're getting that way yourself. The desk isn't voice activated, but that towel boy may be. Oh, screw the desk and get on with the game. Hey, that's what I was trying to do. In this book, the spa keeps track of who has checked out their towels. Shall I just sign my name here in the registry? Oh, yes, please. And don't forget your room number, okay? Yikes.
Oh, sir, you needn't sign in again. I remember you perfectly. While you might find a list of all guests who have checked out towels interesting, it's not really something that will help you escape from La Castellata. Ooh, you win! I'm yours! After all these years, you pick now to come out of the closet? Mmm, there are stacks of fresh, fluffy terry cloth towels behind the counter. You can't reach them from here, but you just know they're soft and cuddly, like your beach towel at home. Except without the big Farrah faucet printed on it. I'm so sorry, Mr. Laffer, but there is a one towel per customer limit. How do you know I already have a towel? It's obvious from that bulge in your pants I've been staring at. Well... You'd like to wipe that drool off the corner of your lip, but you're afraid the clerk will spot you. Hey, those towels were clean, Larry. A rack of attractive advertising brochures rests on the counter. Printed on expensive paper filled with full-color photographs, the brochures advertise La Costellata's many services. Excuse me, sir. Do you mind if I fondle your brochure? Oh, be still my beating heart. Rubbing your fingers across the brochure advertising La Costellata's many fine services and features, you remark... What an expensive feel. <gasps> oh, no, I'm not! You never can tell when I might want to learn what other wonderful features are available here at lovely La Costellata. Deciding to conserve Earth's precious natural resources, you decide one of these brochures should be enough for anybody. Hey, how come my room doesn't look like the one in the picture there? And where are all those fabulous babes? And look, most of them are naked. Hmm, nice expensive paper. Rubbing the brochure filled with photos of naked chicks all over your body will do nothing to further your immediate goals. Well, but it's kind of fun. That's me on page three, standing behind Billy D. Close behind. About the only thing you'd like to do with the brochure is study those pictures of naked women. Those aren't real women, Larry. They're only photographs of naked women. Gary, the towel attendant, flits around behind the towel counter, straightening up things that are already straight and trying to unstraighten things that are straight. Ah, uh, you just knew I would enjoy that, didn't you? Well, you're right, I did. Does this mean you want to Take me out on a date. Oh, I accept, I accept. It doesn't seem like there are enough customers here to warrant a full-time towel attendant. Oh, I do more than this. Much, much more. Oh, I don't want to know. Did I mention I want you in the worst way possible? That would be the worst way possible. Sweetie, I thought you'd never ask. Oh no, what have I done? This door bears a tiny brass plaque with a delicate La Costellata logo and the words Cellulite Drainage Salon. Dr. Swinebutt's Cellulite Drainage Salon is more than you or anyone else ever imagined. This room is filled with heavy-duty things to manipulate, but that's not one of them. Hello? 
back there in the back storage tanks? Can anyone hear me? Still feel those primeval urges to mark your territory? Four prodigious electrodes rise from the electrical cabinets of the cellulite drainage machine like rabbit ears from hell. Be certain you don't touch them. Don't touch them. What are you, crazy? You could die. Ignoring your better judgment and all my recommendations, you realize why you flunked out of music school. You are a poor conductor. Coyly opening every drawer in the table, you discover that Dr. Swinebutt cleaned out more than just his patients before he left town. A standpipe protrudes from the floor. It has a spigot attached. You open the spigot just a little. Nothing comes out. What a revolting thought. These tanks contain the cellulite removed from patients. These cylinders pump up and down, giving the cellulite drainage machine its power. This area receives the large red piston. A gigantic power switch mounted on the cellulite drainage machine's control panel reads, suck and off. You can tell this switch is presently in the off position because the cellulite drainage machine is quiet. Taking the labels literally, eh? The piston shaft is long, hard, and dry. Just one giant shaft to another, eh? You carefully rub the lard on your piston shaft in a slow, sensual, yet totally meaningful manner. Your mighty piston is now lubed and ready. Your piston is lubed up and raring to go. That sucker! You'll never be able to suck hard enough with a hole that big in your hose. There's a huge hole in the main vacuum line. Probing the hole, you feel certain you could never get the machine to suck hard enough with a hole this large in one of its main vacuum lines. In other words, this hose sucks. You can't take the hose with you. You'll have to repair it here. No, that's not even close. Are you just guessing, Larry? God, you're so sick. The probes are designed to be inserted into a patient's body at the point from which the cellulite is to be removed. By their viscous coating, you presume these probes are used to suck the cellulite from the patient's body. While the probes may look like hanging microphones, they aren't. And this is no audition. You really don't want to insert a probe into that part of your body, do you, Larry? This door bears...
there's a tiny brass plaque with a delicate La Costellata logo and the words, Women's Locker Room. To you, this is the ultimate in forbidden fruit. Behind this door lies sights you've never even dared to imagine. Pink tile, sit-down urinals, lilac scent, and much, much more. Oh, don't go in there. Anyway, why would you want to? There's nothing inside but women changing clothes. This door bears a tiny brass plaque with the delicate La Costellata logo and the words, Men's Locker Room. You've had a fear of doors like this ever since junior high school. The ridicule, the shame, the snapping towels, the big boys always dropping their soap. This door bears a tiny brass plaque with the delicate La Costellata logo and the words, High Colonic Treatment Suite. So this is what a high colonic treatment suite looks like. Apparently, this woman really loves flowers. Just look around. You'd love to do things with this woman, but you can't do things you'd like to do by doing that thing you were just doing. Rosé's fiery Spanish temper would really flare up if you took something from her area. Talking to the walls and floor won't help but talking to Rosé certainly could. Oops. Missed. Rosé's room is covered with flowers. She must really love fragrance. It smells like a greenhouse in here. The flowers smell sweet, but with a strange underlying aroma of something unpleasant. The idea is not to take her flowers, but you're getting close. This photograph looks just like a picture window, but of course it's fake. How delightfully primitive, a moo cow in hillside pasture. How unusual, a large sunken Roman tub with stirrups. Good idea, stick your hand into that giant bedpan. Yuck. Good idea. Use the bedpan. No! Why would there be a pair of hand grips mounted on the wall? Using these as a handle, you attempt to remove the far wall, but fail. This hose is connected to that large apparatus near the back wall. It ends in a strange, long, slender nozzle with a trigger valve. Attempting to add to your collection of high-pressure hoses, you try to take rosés, but find it attached to the plumbing. A dispenser of lubricant hangs on the wall. What a massive piece of plumbing! I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. Not. That's quite a piece of plumbing. Those gauges go up to 500 pounds per square inch. This thing sucks. Obviously something goes on in this room that requires quite a bit of pressure. Tanks, you're not welcome. It's a converted Harley. You don't want to start the engine. That's her job. Hello, miss. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer? <laughs> Thank you.
Welcome to La Casa Lata's High Kalanic Treatment Suite, Mr. Laffer. Your presence here is welcome to me, Rose Alita, and your attendant person duty. Uh, thanks, Rose. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. <laughs> You're in charge of haiku lyrics? Okie dokie, it is, Laffer. Sometimes I understand not your English so good. You see, Rosé, very new in U.S. of A. From Spain, I have come just. How long have you been in this country, Rosé? Mm, maybe 3,000 miles. In country, not far. But English speak good, no? Uh, no. Um, I mean, yes. What brought you to America? Airplane. What I mean is, why did you leave Spain and journey all this way? Simply, to America I come to be an au pair for a pair of children. Au pair, huh? You must enjoy working with children, huh? No, making children much more to my liking. But give up tending children I did. Bad hours. Expect you to leave bed during night. Not Rosé. When bed I go, I go for hours. Yeah, I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. Rosé, would you like to try a little something special with me? I consider myself quite the continental type. <laughs> Very sophisticated and uh, urbane. Just that nice. But where I come from, women expect gift before freebie. Say, this girl is continental. I can understand how a woman might want a gift. <laughs> but um, what exactly would please you, Rosé? Just look around you, Lawrence. Tell my likes. You know you can. Hmm, I see. Why don't women ever give you a straight answer? You are up close and personal with Rosé Elita, one spicy little Spanish number who runs La Castellata's High Colonic Treatment Center. She's so realistic you could almost reach out and touch her, but you can't. Not until Sierra makes some truly major improvements in interactive entertainment. And we all know exactly what you would do if you could take her. <laughs> How cute. Is it cold in here, or is it just me? Rosé has fine shoulder-length brown hair that looks soft and kissable. No, 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 you may not fluff my hair. I have not given you permission. May I have your permission to fluff your hair? Oh, not yet, pale little man. You have much to experience first. Hey, is this a wig? Ouch! What are you doing? Oops. <laughs> Sorry, guess not. Rosé has deep, dark, penetrating, liquid brown eyes. No wonder she's in charge of high colonics. Rosé's eyes tell volumes. Play your cards right and she may turn up your volume. Jeez, how gross. Taking her eyeballs? Ah, Rosé. Were I but a finger in your nose. Como? I've got a butter finger in my nose? You crazy. Remember, Larry, you can pick your friends, and you can pick your nose, but you can't pick... Hey, look! I've got your nose! I've got your nose! <laughs> you sound like my old uncle. He is always playing that joke on me. Rosé's full pouting lips give her an air of youthful innocence, tinged with blossoming sexuality that brings to mind such coquettish young babes as Brooke Shields, Uma Thurman, and Amy Fisher. As much as you would love to touch those full, soft lips, 
you restrain yourself. After all, she bites. Or at least you hope she bites. You carefully and sneakily pull off a sample of Rosé's lipstick, placing it on a hermetically sealed glass slide you keep in your billfold. Check this out in the lab, Dano. Look at that strong, graceful neck. For just a moment, you imagine it straining in a paroxysm of pleasure as Rosé performs nature's mystery dance of love with a virile young hunk like yourself. Well, kind of like yourself, only virile, young, and hunky. No, no, no. I have not given you permission to touch my neck. May I have permission to touch your neck, Rosé? Permission granted. Gracias. You're welcome. Don't take my neck. You already have much the better neck than I, since Joris is capable of supporting your extra largest head. Rosé's right arm is permanently cocked. A feeling not wholly unfamiliar to you. With her slender left arm cocked jauntily on her hip, Rosé Elita looks like a real little spitfire. You gently brush your hand along Rosé's arm. Immediately, a thrill of sensual pleasure races up your arm, across your shoulder, up your neck to your scalp, bounces right off, then shoots back down your neck, past your waist, and ends up somewhere south of Burbank. Uh, what do you want with my arm? I don't know, I just thought I'd take it. No, you may not. You have two of your own already. Make do. Rosé is wearing a flowered tube top that accentuates her petite but perfectly proportioned pair of protuberances. Mm, no need to my tube top touch. Rosé tell you. It is 50-50 cotton poly blend floral print pattern by Armani of Beverly Hills. Satisfied? Hardly, but that's enough clothing information. The tube top is too small for your manly chest. Besides, flower prints make you look like your grandmother. Rosé's breasts are pert and perfect. One is pert, the other is perfect. Which is which? You be the judge. Hmm. I wonder if she'd mind if I touched her breast. Yep. You are so funny. Those you cannot take. I can't? No, no, no. But you may enjoy looking, yes? An electric fan is mounted on the far wall. So, uh, Rosé, did I tell you I'm your biggest fan? The key to your room? Yes, for cleaning underneath my fingernails I use, okay? Never mind. What? Why did you think I would want something like that? I have not needs for such a, the how you say, thingy. Hey, here you go, Rosie. I'd like to give you a little something special. I can see how much you enjoy flowers. They are most beautiful. I'll put them right over here. And in return, I'd like to give you a little something special, mi nuevo amigo. Hey, Larry, finally you're going to get lucky. And with this hot Spanish senorita, too.
please do examine closely the painting on the wall over there. I believe you will surely enjoy that which will follow. I will make you experience feelings you never knew before. That wouldn't be hard. You will feel like a new man. Good, because the old man wasn't getting any. Why am I looking at a painting? Why is she running that Harley with the carb too rich? Are you ready for a good time? Oh, I've been ready for 30 years. I'm all yours, Rosé. Okay, honey. Drop those pants. Finally, Larry. But shouldn't she at least dim the lights? Whoa! What's that? Rosé, uh, exactly what does high colonic mean? Wonderful, am I right? Isn't it a feeling you've never felt before? Yo! Ah! Rose, I've never felt more emotions in such a short period of time. Yes, I know. All my customers say that. But here, Lawrence, allow me to give you a little something in return. No! Not again! Oh, you silly! No! This! Why, Rosé! What a beautiful orchid! It's... it's... it's so prom night! Thank you, Larry. Come back soon, so we can do this again, okay? You know, I don't feel pooped anymore. See? And also, you are not so full of sheet. What did she say? When are you gonna learn to stay away from women, sweetie? You haven't seen an orchid since your high school prom. When you ended up with your own corsage the night she stood you up. This orchid is already perfect. Don't mess with it. Mmm, this orchid is redolent. Was I supposed to pack a thesaurus? Hotel's west hallway. Some stairs lead downward. What cool wallpaper! Since there's nobody around, you practice a few of your favorite pickup lines. Hey, uh, baby, new in town? Want to pick out drapes? What? No, it's just a cold sore. What are you doing? Trolling? A banister leads downstairs. There may be an entire underground empire down there. But probably not. Funny, this banister feels quite loose. Oh well. Boy, are you paranoid. The banister is quite attached to its wall. They're never seen going anywhere alone. This banister is so silent. It must be bored.
La Costellata's makeup classroom offers the latest in high-tech, non-interactive, overpriced video lessons in something all these women already know how to do. There's not much to do in the makeup classroom unless you've suddenly developed an interest in cross-dressing. Hey, man, no way! Steal this room and you'll go to hell in a handbasket. Or at the very least, Helena Rubenstein. These women aren't interested in talking to you. They just want to make small talk, dribble, gossip, and palaver. Exactly like they do in a beauty salon. Yes, upon close inspection, you believe this is the room where Max fact her. All around the makeup classroom, large monitors show a video entitled Kiss and Makeup, the La Costa Lotta Way. Ow. Oh. A super graphic of a giant lipstick tube sprawls across the left wall of the classroom. It seems an innocent blush brush is about to be penetrated by a large lipstick. You find the gigantic graphic of a mascara brush about to enter its bottle. Somehow provocative. An electrical cord lies on the floor unused. Carefully examining the electrical cord, you notice it appears to be in working condition. It's just not in use here. Wouldn't that be a shock? Could this be the missing cord? One end of this electrical cord has a standard AC plug attached, but the other end is still well insulated. What possible use could you make of a length of electrical wire? Whoops, wrong tool. You briefly consider forming the cord into a noose and looping it around your neck, but decide you're not doing that badly yet. This is the only desk without a working lamp. Feeling this desk's lamp, you notice it's cold. Obviously, something is wrong with this light. You have no need for a massive makeup table complete with non-working electrical lights. A woman sits at this desk, trying her best to ignore you completely. But you really don't care as your eyes are attracted to that dark-skinned beauty at the right desk in the front row. The woman sitting at that desk ignores you completely. You have no need for a massive makeup table complete with electrical lights. You know, babe, a beauty as natural as yours doesn't require makeup. Buzz off, jerk! That is makeup! Good approach. Run right up and let fly. You take a closer look at the lovely young thing sitting at the right front makeup table. Good day, miss. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> Why, hello. <laughs> I didn't hear you come in. You may call me Chablis. Chablis is one beautiful human being. Perky, cute as a bug, a sharp dresser, lovely hair, perfect makeup. She's the girl you always wanted to take home to mother. Too bad mother moved without leaving a forwarding address. You enjoy the touching part, don't you? There's nothing here you can take off me. At least, not here. <laughs> Not now. Hey, what do you think? You're the only guy with one of those? Oh, hold your horses, Larry. Cool down. Chablis' hair has that wild, untamed, tribal look that says, I dare you to try and brush me. Just try. Oh, no. 
None of that touchy-feely stuff until I'm ready to play. And I think you're holding up the party. Yeah, Chablis' hair could fool you all right. Her braids look detachable, but they're not. Chablis' beautiful eyes glisten in the lights of her makeup mirror. Her eyes are hazel, large and deep and liquid. She's either tremendously sexy, or has an advanced case of myopia, or both. May I have your eyeballs? No. Well, just for a souvenir. <laughs> Come on, how about I just won? No, but I love men who love to collect things. Only one tiny nose hair protrudes from Chablis' left nostril. Nah, just kidding. Hey, stop touching my nose. What are you doing? Do I have a nose hair hanging out or something? Oh boy, are you romantic? I don't think so. What full, sensitive lips. You long to taste them. And other things, too. Mmm, I love the taste of a man's knuckles. Once you've taken what I have to offer, you will allow me to suck on your knuckles, won't you? Oh, I do want you to take my mouth, Larry. I really do. But not until we're sure we're safe. You can only imagine what must lie beneath that top. Since you'll never actually see it in this game. Uh-uh-uh. Aren't you forgetting something? A small length of sheep's intestines, perhaps? Gee, Chablis really knows how to set the mood. Not yet, honey bunch. But believe you me, <laughs> I could rip this sweater off and be all over you in an instant. But not without protection. No, honey. Not me. I'm rather new around here. <clears throat> Have you been here long? Oh, not that long. Are you going to the big weight loss spring formal? Weight loss spring formal? Uh, what's that? <laughs> Sounds like a prom. Right you are, Larry. I've been searching everywhere for a new dress, but I just can't find one with that, um, certain something I crave. Shopping? Here? Where? I haven't seen a single store. Oh, they're here, all right. You're just not a shopper like me. My motto is, Veni, Vidi, Visa. I came, I saw, I shopped. So, uh, you'd like a new dress, huh? Oh, yes. If I could only find something brilliant, why, I'd... I'd... Hell, I don't know what I'd do. But what's the use? I'll just have to wear something old, I suppose. Not having a new dress to wear to the ball is so humiliating. Don't worry, Chablis. I know right where to find you a dress. I do know where to find a dress, don't I? Please. I don't want to see your beaver. I just love that photo of Billy Dee administering mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Those are a good idea, aren't they? Later, if we get to know each other a little better, you should try this idea again. Yeah, 
Yeah, right. <laughs> like you're going to get me into your room. Oh, how sweet. <laughs> An orchid. And it's perfect, too. I'm sure I'd love it, but I just can't accept it. I only accept orchids by the dozen. I get that free stuff in my bathroom every day, too. Oh, honey, I don't want that. But I would like something nice to wear. Excuse me? What the hell do you think you're doing? I suppose this means you want to take me out? Somebody paid a lot of money for this junk. Hey, feel all the little bumps from that guy's brush? Even your mediocre taste prevents you from stealing anything this bad. What? You think this is a talking picture? That might actually be an improvement. But what if somebody sees you? A tiny brass plaque bears the caption, Nuns of Steel. The sculpture feels like it's made of steel. It's made of steel not too steep. She, unlike a real woman, has nothing to say. That's sacrilegious, not to mention unbearably awkward. This guy looks familiar. This sculpture is made of fine grain ironwood imported all the way from Idaho. Take, take, take. When are you going to start giving, Larry? Me, Larry. You, who? That's disgusting. Russ, is that you? Did you bring the, like, protection? the sculptures in this hotel naked who decorated this place is he obsessed or was it a she it's a good thing you can't see behind this window frame the sculpture back there is really nasty oh 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 Ooh. Why, the sculpture of that woman is stark naked. Feels good to me. Excuse me, someone's knocking. <laughs> Man, business hasn't been this good since the Taylor Convention. Hey, come back later. I'm working, okay? There's no response from this room. Chris? Isn't there something else you could do since you're on your knees? This piece is by Benny Boy Rodin, a new wave grunge sculptor and great-grandson of Auguste. It's a prime example of his Walmart period. I just can't keep my hands off this cool sculpture-like stuff. To you, this is either a statement against man's inhumanity to man, or the Pope doing gymnastics. Isn't her thing a little pointy? Ruben, get up! I think it's your roommate. If you're delivering the goat, just leave it outside the door until I get the sling erected. There's a lovely little lawn for lounging and lolling at your leisure, Larry. 
The grass is so nice and soft. You'd love to tear off all your clothes, lie down, and wriggle all around. But the last time you tried that, they told you not to come back to the Astrodome ever again. You don't want this grass. It may look healthy, but it's got all the standard tropical grass infestations. Blight worms, not weed, pus mites, the whole works. The lawn can't hear you. The lawn is stone deaf. Yes, it's sod, but true. Find something else to do with that thing, nature boy. It appears to be a tree of some sort. You're unfamiliar with the indigenous flora. You can't climb this tree. It's too smooth and weather-beaten. You're barking up the wrong tree. It's like talking to a brick wall, only thinner and rounder. That would be a sign of utter disrespect to a tree that's far older and taller than you. Not to mention how much bushier it is on top. Some beautiful red flowering plants decorate this shady, peaceful cliffside clearing. Ow! The thorns on these plants give you a tiny prick. No, too easy. Try as you might, you can't pull up that shrubbery. Apparently its tap root is longer than yours. You chat a while with Mother Nature. What? And chance impaling your manhood on one of those pesky thorns? What if it got infected? It might swell up until it was many times its normal size. Okay, so what's the bad news? It appears to be just one of the windswept trees that make La Castellata so beautiful, green, and lush. Little do you know that this tree has a fungal infestation called Skirvin Syndrome that will eventually twist it into a crude approximation of genitalia. But let's enjoy it now while it's still pretty and unsuggestive. The tree feels smooth from years of constant wind and rain coming off the, as far as I can see, to the north. This is a real tree as opposed to a plastic one. It actually has roots that anchor it to the ground. Therefore, you can't pick it up. Good tree. Pretty tree. You're a pretty tree, aren't you? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Uh, perhaps you should consider a dog, Larry. Don't you know to go before you start to play a game? Now you're just going to have to hold it. No, not literally. These stairs lead down to the beach. Feels like they're still holding up swell, even after years of wind, rain, and salt water. Sure you can take the stairs, right down to the beach. Chatting with the stairs is non-productive. All they do is sit and stare. Relieving yourself on the stairs would make them particularly treacherous. As far as the eye can see, you see the as far as I can see. You can't feel the water from up here. You're too far from the water to take any. Even with your mouth open really wide, the water can't hear you from here. But if you walk down to the beach, you could actually enter the water. Yeah, that's it. Wade out to where it's really deep and then talk as loudly as you can. Yeah, try that. You'd need a bigger hose and a lot more water pressure. The landscapers added an attractive hedge to the rim of the cliff that drops down to the beach. Nice rim job. Try something useful. Stop beating around the bush. Try as you might, you can't pull up that shrubbery. Apparently its tap root is longer than yours. Hello, Mr. President. George isn't the president anymore, Larry. I knew that. 
You give the bushes a good sprinkling. You're so territorial. 